All right, fourth graders, I had a really fun time learning about circuits and electricity with you guys. And now we're gonna turn our attention to magnets. I, I love magnets, I think they're so magical. So I need you to get these things out of your bag. Do you remember all those testing materials that we tested for uh, conducting? We're gonna test those same materials for magnetism. And I also need you to get out your science notebook and this particular page here, it says magnetic observations and it's got a list of all those items. So make sure you get that, cut it, trim it, put it into your science notebook. Go back to the front of the science notebook and put number four in the table of contents. Put number four, magnetic observations. Mine is on page 10. So I'm gonna put page 10, magnetic observations, okay? So um, you got that all ready to go. And there's one more thing I wanna talk about. Um, from now on, for the rest of the school year, every week you need to record a question that you have about science. Um, I'd like it to be something about kind of what we're talking about. So let's say you had a question about circuits. You could ask a question about circuits. Or you could ask this week, you could ask a question about magnetism. But I'd like you to write a question in your science notebook every week. At the end, what do you still want to know about? Okay, it's part of your report card grade. On your grade, on your report card, there's a question, there's a section asks scientific questions. So you need to ask one in your notebook every week. Please take the magnet out of your kit. And as I said, you have all of these different supplies that we tested to see whether they conducted electricity. Now we're gonna test them and see if they are magnetic or stick to a magnet, okay? So uh, on your page, it says, will it stick? Yes or no, and that is the prediction. And then after you make your prediction, you're going to actually test. Things that stick, you put a check here. Things that don't stick, you put a check here. So I'm gonna start, I'm not gonna do the prediction yet. You guys are gonna do the prediction. So I'm gonna try the aluminum foil. So first of all, it stuck, it, it was a conductor, right? So might also stick to the magnet. So I'm gonna test it. No, it does not stick. So I'm gonna put it in the column of things that do not stick. Now boys and girls, not every single person has all of these items. So please, you might need to take turns and telling each other what sticks or what doesn't stick if you don't have all those items. Okay, test all those things, make a prediction, then test, and then we'll come back and discuss Okay, it. now that you've tested all the materials, I wanna give you my answers. These are the things that do stick to the magnet. The black rock, isn't that surprising? I have a black rock and it sticks to the magnet. It's not really, really strong, but mine sticks to the magnet. Okay, the paper fastener, the steel nail, the steel paper clip, the steel screen, and the steel screw, and the steel washer. There's kind of an important word there. Um, so nothing else for me stuck to the magnet. Please write down, make sure that you have those answers. Now, I want you to write on the next page what materials stick to magnets. That's our focus question. Take a look at the list and is there something that is in common? What materials stick to magnets? The answer is not metal. When we talked about conductors, metal is a conductor, but aluminum foil is a metal and it does not stick to my magnet. Um, let's see, what else do I have here that's metal? My copper foil is metal, but it does not stick to the magnet. So there, it's not just metals. There has to be a specific kind of metal that sticks to the magnet. This nail sticks to the magnet. This nail, nail does not. This nail is aluminum, 
This nail is iron. Boys and girls, uh, anything that has iron will stick to the magnet. Now, I said a couple of other things, steel. Well, steel is an alloy, it's a mixture, and it contains 99% iron and 1% carbon. And the carbon keeps it so it does not rust. Sometimes iron will rust. So steel sticks to the magnet because it contains iron. So I wrote in my science notebook, Anything that contains iron sticks to a magnet. Steel is mostly iron, so it sticks to a magnet. So one of the cool things about a magnet, it helps you to be an iron detective. You can go around your room or your house and find things that contain iron. Because if my magnet sticks to it, it contains iron. My whiteboard contains iron. Boys and girls, I want you to take a few minutes and find five things in your room or in your house that contain iron. Use your magnet and find five things that stick to the magnet. Do you remember in third grade when we talked about forces? push and pull. And in order to move a chair, you have to touch the chair. You have to apply a force by touching the chair. One of the things that's kind of miraculous about magnets is that magnetism travels through materials and exerts its force without actually touching the thing it, it's, it's moving. So let me give you an example. I have my magnet. I'm gonna get a piece of cardboard. Now, I know that the magnet does not attract to the cardboard, right? However, if I put a paper clip on the other side of the cardboard, the magnetic force travels through the cardboard. I've got a magnet on the back. The cardboard is, the magnet is not touching the paper clip. And yet, the paper clip is attracted to the magnet because the magnet has a magnetic force that extends beyond the physical boundary of the magnet. So, magnets are so interesting and they have this force field that goes around them. But sometimes when you have two magnets, they interact in interesting ways. I don't think I gave you more than one magnet, boys and girls, and I apologize. If you have magnets at home, you can use them. But I wanna show you what happens with these two magnets. I have two magnets, these are called donut magnets, don't eat them. And if I have these two magnets and they pull together, right? Sometimes they pull together. And if I take one and flip it over, now the magnets push away. Like I'm trying to push them together, but they don't want to go together. So there's a reason that magnets do this. And we talked about this in third grade, but we're just gonna do a quick review. To help understand how magnets interact, I have some bar magnets. These are a bar. These are donut magnets. This is a bar magnet. And you notice on this one it says north, and this one it says south, N, S. And this one is S, N. So let's see what happens when these two magnets come close to each other. Ah! So these two came together. They pulled together. They, we say that they attract. Now I'm gonna pull them apart and I'm gonna flip this, this one around. Now I have a south pole and a south pole. Oh, they are not interested in hanging out together at all. Whoa-oh. So let's see, if I have two south poles, they push away. I'm gonna flip this around. I'm gonna flip this one around. Two north poles, they push away. I'm gonna flip this around, north and south, they attract. So we have a rule. We say the rule is opposites attract. North is the opposite of south and they attract. And the same 
poles repel. North is the same as north, and they repel. South is the same as south, and they repel. Next week, we are going to continue exploring with magnets. Make sure to write a question in your science notebook for today. Is there something you still want to know about magnetism? See you next week, cougars.